Welcome to this lesson on the tune Silent Night. This is a famous old Christmas carol written in Austria in the 19th century and it works really well on this lovely instrument, the CG Anglo Concertina. We're going to play it in the key of C major. It's a little bit high for singing, uh, but it's a nice key for this instrument. It's a waltz, so we're counting in threes, pretty standard stuff. Um, You'll notice in the bass clef all the way through this that there is nothing. That means to say everything's going to be um pa pa. And as I say, nice and straightforward. So let's get started. The first four bars, you can see the chord of C written above the bar. So you're going to play this. All on the push, it's a chord of C major. Now the C bass, button one, C row, little finger. And then the two notes that you play with that are C and E. It's the octave on that C. Uh, the middle C, actually, I say this a lot these days, the button that appears to be in the middle of the concertina, uh, by luck, that actually is middle C on the piano. So you use your second finger on that. And to go with that, uh, you play the note E, which is button four, finger one, all on the C row. So your um, if your um pa part is this C note here, and your pa is the C and the E there. So um, pa, pa, and that's one bar of music, counted one, two, three, and you've got four of those in a row. The right hand side, a little bit more complicated. We've got the tune, but we're also going to play a low harmony where we can in this, because I think it sounds really nice. There's a couple of places where we play this uh, just one note at a time, but harmony is possible for most of this, I think. So we've got... Now you can hear the tune and the harmony below it. So bar one, you've got the notes of G and E. Right, G is button eight, E is button seven, uh, both on the push, finger three, finger two. Now, what you do is you leave your third finger on that button, lift your second finger up. I'll just take that finger out of the way for the moment. The little finger goes on the note A, which is button nine on the C row. So you've got little finger there, third finger there, and then you return to your first pair of notes. You've got... I always think of it as I kind of lean over to get that A and F and it's push, pull, push. What happens there with fitting that with the left hand is you play the first pair of notes of the right hand side with the um, that single bass note. You do the first of your pars and then you lift off the bass while you play these quavers, this A and F, and then when you come back to the G and the E, the first two notes, that goes with the second par. So you've got um, pa, pa. Yeah. So it's pretty straightforward. Dodgy crotchet, quaver crotchet is counted one, two, and three. So where I said the two softly, that's where the dots are. The dot adds on half as much again. So a dodgy crotchet is one and a half beats. So the first pair of notes come in on beat one. Uh, the quavers, the A and the F, come on the end count of two, halfway through beat two, and the final pair of crotchets, the G and the E, that you return to, come in on beat three. So that gives us... Now, the second bar, very straightforward. You come down to the notes C and E, buttons six and seven on the C row, fingers one and two, and it's dotted minimum, so they're three beats. So they're held for the entire bar while you're doing your um pa pa. So put that together, those two bars. And just do that again. So bars three and four are the same as bars one and two. Don't forget all these left hand chords can be found in your uh, chords folder. Uh, it's a little PDF so you can either look at on your computer or you can of course print out.